Hey guys, Erin here again, and I'm going to be wrapping up the last two keto talks that I've been doing, um, and I'm going to be finally going over what I keep in my freezer as well as what I keep in my supplement cabinet. Um, I keep a lot of items in my freezer in order to kind of keep staples stocked, so that way if I ever get bored with things that I purchase that are a little bit fresher, um, I can add some frozen ingredients in, or if I need to kind of cook something up a little bit quicker and it's easier in its frozen farm to kind of get it in there. Um, I have that on hand so that way I never feel tempted to go out to restaurants or tempted to cheat or to go out and quickly get something that might not be 100% keto friendly. So yeah, these are the things that I keep stocked and on hand in order to kind of keep kicking it keto. Um, my supplements are completely based on what my diet is. They're also based on my gender, my age, my current weight, my height, you know, those factors and how much I take and how much I need, as well as my past nutritional information and any deficiencies that I'm getting from my diet in and of itself. I think of the word supplement as a supplement. It is an extra, it's a thing that I bring in because I'm not getting those nutrients, minerals, or vitamins from my actual food, and I need to increase the amount or supplement in the amount because it's either not possible through what I'm eating on my keto diet or it's you know I'm just not getting it in there in the quantity that my body needs and so um, there are some supplements that I'm going to show that are really based on my personal like needs as well as kind of you know areas where I want to make sure I'm supplementing more in order to balance my hormones and get myself to that kind of optimal health the majority of the um brands and supplements that I use are from 100% natural sources. They are clean um, and they're just basically direct sources of um, that particular supplement. There's no fillers because um, a lot of supplements that you can take can have extra things in there that might affect um, your ability to stay keto as you supplement. Um, so I try to get to the most no-nonsense source of it so that way I'm not screwing anything up and I can you know fully enjoy the carbs that I allow myself each day um, and have them actually come from food from good fiber from good vegetables from things that are actually gonna you know make me healthy and then also things for, that are seasoning so that way I'm not getting bored um, I'm staying you know happy with my keto meals and that my supplements are as minimal impacting on me as possible. So that's what I've got for you today. With that being said, I'm just gonna start popping the items on there and then we'll just kinda talk and go through it. So one of the questions that I get the most is do I take vitamin C, do I take vitamin C regularly? And I can 100% state that I do take vitamin C basically daily. Um, I will either supplement it through here or um, you know, I've taken pills before of it or like tap chewable tablets. I've moved away from taking like chewable tablets because there's additional fillers and sugars so I'm just using it in this powder form now. Um, I have commented to various places how much I actually take but I'm not going to state it in this video but I do practice mega dosing vitamin C. Um, you can google that and find out what that is but um, that is something that I do and I am nowhere near being deficient in vitamin C. I personally take it in excess. So um, the type that I use is from Bronson. Um, it's vitamin C from sodium ascorbate. Um, so that is um, a, you know, a real version of vitamin C and then it's also with mixed with sodium so it's in the sodium form. So I get a lot of my sodium requirements from this as well as my um, vitamin C needs. So yeah, I do tend to mix this in with my uh, apple cider vinegar and I basically put these two together. I'll do a drink of it and then I will add a little stevia to it. Something I also add in to that um, drink occasionally and this is totally dependent upon what my needs are are trace minerals and the thing about this is that it's I hope this shows up um, it's got a lot of the minerals that you need um, yes perfect it's got a lot of the minerals that you need as you can see on your keto diet so this has the magnesium it has um, sodium in it it's got chloride in it and it's got some potassium in it it's not a significant amount um, and this one doesn't say like, you know, oops, sorry, that it's hitting the 
daily recommended needs. I'm upside down compared to you guys right now, so if I'm touching in the wrong place, it's because my hands are upside down <laughs> and I'm trying to look at the camera at the same time. So I find that this helps to kind of get those extra needs in and extra doses in. So I find that this helps to keep me kind of in balance for my daily electrolyte needs um, and kind of keep things good. I can just put this in a little bit of water. Normally I will do this just alone in water. Um, sometimes I'll add it to that drink that I was talking about before, but for the most part I am, yeah, just kind of adding it into just some water and just drinking it down. Kind of on the um, whole electrolytes level, I've talked about it before, but I do use Natural Calm at times um, just to get my magnesium levels up there. Um, Personally, I try to get a lot of my potassium through my actual foods. I find that eating, you know, vegetables and eating good vegetables is the easiest way to kind of get those levels in there and keep things from like leg cramping and, um, you know, kind of just feeling off um, at bay. Um, so yeah, I, I use my food mainly for my mag or for my past potassium um, and then I use um, some more supplements whenever I feel like my magnesium is low. So I've talked about this one to death on other videos but this is my MCT oil that I'm using right now. I vary different MCT oils depending on where I get the uh, best price and whatever is the cheapest and so that's just kind of what I go with. Um, I basically, wherever I can get a deal on a um, C8 MCT oil, that is what I go after. So um, this is again a C8 chain um, MCT oil and so I keep this on hand. I'll put it in my Bulletproof coffees. I'll add it to salad dressings if I feel like they're, I'm not getting enough fat in that meal. Um, so yeah, I usually have a good big jug of um, C8 MCT oil on hand. Um, another one that I've shown in other videos, um, lots of videos, and I'll just keep it short and simple, is my probiotic. I do take a probiotic in order to make sure everything's going good. You know, my system's working well, and um, I've got the right kind of uh, environment within my gut in order to process and get nutrients out and keep myself healthy. Um, having good gut health you know, helps to bolster your immune system and so that's what I do with that. Um, the other thing that I keep on hand is um, some uh, liquid iodine. Um, liquid iodine is something that I'm mindful of. Iodine really helps to support a lot of your systems and can keep you healthy. Um, but if you're like me and the majority of salt that you're getting on this keto diet is either coming from, you know, sources like this, um, your Kerrygold butter, your sea salt that you're cracking on your food, you are not getting iodized salt. And so um, having an iodine um, deficiency can lead to things like chronic fatigue and not feeling well, not feeling your best. And so you want to make sure that you still get your iodine in there. And so whenever I feel low, I supplement with this. I also um, eat things like seaweed and um, make sure that I'm eating enough shellfish or fish in order to kind of get it in there. So yeah, iodine is definitely a staple in my supplement cabinet. All right, so something else I keep on hand, um, and this is my second one now that I go through, uh, that I've gone through, um, is spirulina. Um, I will add this to smoothies. I keep some sort of green powder on hand um, just because it's an easy way to get a lot of vitamins and minerals in there into a smoothie. Um, and I've adapted myself to this flavor. Um, spirulina is kind of a rougher flavor to handle, and so, um, Start with a little, maybe add a little bit more stevia, but eventually um, you could probably handle the full scoop. It is strong. It's got a very strong sea taste. Um, what I like about this one, and I hope to God my camera will focus, yes, um, is the fact that this is a good source of vitamin A and vitamin K, which can be kind of hard to get into your diet, especially when you're on a ketogenic diet. So this is why I personally like to use greens formulas. Um, this does have a little bit of potassium as well as um, 
Uh, yeah, it does have some sodium and some iron in, in there too. So another thing that I keep in stock is um, fish oil. Um, I like fish oils and other oils that will help to balance my omegas. When you have your omegas in the perfect balance, um, your body functions more optimally. So you want to make sure you're having the right ratio of omega-3, 6, and 9. And so um, that is something I try to focus on. So I use this fish oil in order to do that um, and kind of keep my hormones in balance. I've talked about it in my hormone video. Um, and it, you know, it is something that I think is super important to, you know, kind of keep in balance. I noticed personally that um, I am somebody that had my hormones, you know, in balance. And so taking omegas and taking them in the right ratios has um, definitely helped me to get to um, that kind of more optimal hormone balance level. Um, I'm also somebody that deals with a lot of stress and so keeping my um, hormones in balance definitely helps with that. The other kind of thing on the kind of oil side, um, I don't take this super often. I take it more so when I'm feeling like I'm going to be getting sick. Um, is black seed oil. Um, this is again another great um, way to balance your omegas. Um, this is a little bit more expensive and so I take this very sparingly, use it like in the tiniest amounts and only when I'm really desperate to need it. But it is something that, that is a supplement that I will take occasionally. Um, you know, black seed um, oil has a lot of antioxidant pr properties in it and so I use that to kind of try to get ahead of a cold or try to get ahead of a sickness. If I get totally worn down, I will totally follow whatever the proper you know, medical things that I need to do in order to get better, but um, I try to stay a little bit ahead of it um, before I get too sick. So the last thing that I kind of keep in my, and I've talked about these before, um, is my turmeric and my cinnamon. Um, these both help with inflammation and just kind of firing up the metabolism and just kind of, you know, getting things going, getting things moving. Um, so I've got my turmeric. It's it's getting less and less. I, I do use a very little amount of this in things like my bulletproof coffee, on food, and seasonings on chicken, stuff like that, just to kind of get it in there. Um, I also use a turmeric bone broth powder um, to get turmeric in there too. So my cinnamon, um, this does say Vietnamese cinnamon on here. Um, that's not what's actually in here. Um, this cinnamon is Ceylon cinnamon, which is a real cinnamon. Um, and is where you would actually get the antioxidant benefits from. Don't go to your store and buy like McCormick cinnamon or whatever, whatever the generic cinnamon is. Um, you wanna get Ceylon cinnamon because that's actual real cinnamon. And believe you me, uh, when you taste test a fake cinnamon or a synthetic cinnamon compared to a real cinnamon, you can 100% notice the flavor difference. Like I would say Ceylon cinnamon tastes the way like cinnamon gum tastes and that's a like, true real taste. I don't think cinnamon gum actually has Ceylon cinnamon in it, but that's what they're trying to mimic that actual very strong, very real cinnamon flavor with. Um, so what's in here is Ceylon cinnamon. Um, I just use this container and buy it in bulk at my um, co-op. You can also buy it in bulk on places like Amazon or iHerb. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to be going with the Ceylon cinnamon versus a synthetic or a um, non-real cinnamon because that's where you're actually going to be getting the benefits from versus the fake stuff. All right, so let's go over what I kind of keep stocked in my freezer. So um, I'm just gonna go over some of these items super quick because they're things that you guys will have totally seen before, but I always keep a uh, package of um, salmon, frozen salmon fillets, and I get this from my friend at Costco. <laughs> um, and basically this will have like eight servings um, within a pouch. I think it's like $26. So when I break up the math, um, it makes eating salmon um, at least once a week somewhat affordable. So um, another thing that I go and get at Costco and I get in bulk is my um, frozen broccoli. So this, um, this is just a big bag of organic frozen broccoli. Um, and I like broccoli because again, it's a great source of a ton of your different micro or nutrients and your vitamins. So it's got the vitamin C and it's got some iron in it. And then it's um, got my um, kind of good um, carbohydrate ratio. So there's four bags in this big thing. And um, usually like my husband and I will split a bag and then just call it a day. 
Um, I also buy, um, this is getting loud, so I also buy um, fresh bags of broccoli from Costco, but my philosophy is that I kind of do a um, more fresh earlier in the week, so Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're eating pretty fresh. Thursday and Friday, we start to go into kind of our frozen stuff because um, the shelf life of what I bought fresh over the weekend is starting to go, and so I supplement a lot of the frozen items in as the week kind of ends and goes past. Um, just to help with my seafood intake, I've got these little like um, little lobster tail things, and this is again a way I help with my iodine um, and getting that in there. Um, this makes me feel fancy. These are kind of like already the pre-cooked done tail thingies, and um, I get this big thing from Costco. It varies based on how much how much you buy. Um, it's price per pound, and this will last. If my husband and I both eat from this bag, this will be um, a good four meals. So. It's still a good price amount for a meat that we're gonna have in a meal, so. Yeah, I've got some of these tiny little lobster tails usually on hand in there, and there's no carbohydrates in them, which is great. Um, I also, again, from Costco, I buy these grass-fed beef patties, and I've put them in some of my videos. Um, these are great, they're pre-seasoned, they're pre-cooked, um, so all I have to do is really quickly just throw them on like the stove top, and they'll be, um, cooked up probably in like five to six minutes. So on a night when I am stressed out and running through and not knowing what to eat or not knowing what to go after, um, these are really easy. Um, I do a burger bowl type thing um, where I will cook that up and then um, put it on top of some chopped kale. <laughs> um, this is one of the things that I, I always buy every week because I use it up at least one package of this every week. I like kale. It's a great way to get a lot of nutrients in there um, and a lot of great vitamins in there too. Um, so it's a great source of vitamin A, which is one that's kind of harder to get in there. And then um, it's got some calcium, some iron, um, stuff like that. But what I really like about kale is it's um, within kind of my semi-ideal ratio where it's got three carbs but then two of them are from fiber. I really like um, kale. It's just an easy way to get a lot of great nutrients in. Again, this is frozen. Um, I actually just put this on my stovetop with some butter and saute it up and then I will add um, cheese to it so um, it gets creamy. Maybe some whipped cream in there um, to add extra fat and then I'll season it the way I want to um, to my personal taste and then I will throw the burger on top do my favorite ketchup, which is a low carb ketchup and some hot sauce. Sometimes I throw an egg on there and I call it a meal. And it's just, yeah, an easy way to get some good fiber in there, get some good nutrients, all that stuff. This is not attractive at all, but um, I keep these like organic chicken wings on hand because we like chicken wings and this is the most disgusting like presentation of this. So I apologize for that, but it's frozen and I get these this thing, it comes with three sets of these from Costco again. I think it, this was like $18, maybe $16 um, for the three. So this is a bigger serving of chicken wings than I would be able to buy from my grocery store. Um, so we get a little bit more protein in there. When we do stuff like this, it's usually, you know, the chicken wing is the main thing and then we do some sort of like salad or kale chips or something as the side um, to go with it so that we're getting, you know, fiber in there and something else in there. Um, and then I make my sauce from butter so I get the fat in there and then, you know, if you make blue cheese dressing and all that kind of stuff, um, you um, will get your good um, fats from that too. So, um, so yeah, I, I usually keep a frozen thing of drumsticks on hand so that way we have them on hand. Um, the other thing and kind of this last variety of stuff that I'm gonna show you is something that I think is a really cool way to get your grass-fed beef um, for cheaper. There's things like butcher box and stuff like that, but what I do is I work with a local farmer and my state laws allow me to do this, to buy basically a um, quarter of a cow from them. Um, well, actually we buy half a cow and then we split that 
amount with a family member and then we basically store a quarter of a grass-fed cow in our freezer throughout the year so we can supplement in things like steaks. Um, we've eaten a lot of the higher quality steaks at this point but we got ribeyes, we got um, meat to make jerky, we got um, soup bones um, and then we got a ton of um, ground beef. We got probably about 35 of these and so that will help to reduce the cost of me having to go out and buy ground beef every um, week and we paid about three dollars per pound for you know across all these cuts across all these bones across all this ground beef and that was also with it getting butchered um, professionally butchered and then packaged nicely so um, if I go to my co-op and I buy all these things, I'm going to be paying approximately $6 a pound. So that cuts the cost of eating grass-fed meat in half. In fact, that makes it so it's cheaper than buying um, commercial-grade meat from my grocery store. So I looked into finding a farmer that sells and does grass-fed beef. Um, you can find people that do it online. There's services that kind of provide it and they'll provide it for, I think in my area, at least it's like $4.50. But again, I live out in the country and so it was really easy to kind of find a farmer that does grass-fed beef and um, we were able to get, you know, a large amount that lasts us throughout the year. And um, yeah, so with the with the soup bones, um, I do make my own bone broth and I do keep this in my freezer. Um, I'll just heat it up on the stove or I'll just put it in my fridge overnight to de-thaw. Um, I do it with like fresh onions, um, celery and carrots to kind of add some more nutrients in it. I drain out all of the actual carrots and celery and stuff so that's not in here but it's just the actual um, bone broth itself and so um, I don't let these sit in my freezer for too long. I'll try to get them used um, but it is something that's great for your gut health. It's a great way to get um, your collagen in in another source and if you're like me and you're losing weight I'm always trying to be um, mindful of my collagen and you know how it supports my skin and my bones and my muscles as I go through this whole transformation process. So um, yep, jars of bone broth are in my freezer. All right, so those are the items that I keep in my freezer as well as my supplement cabinet. Uh, I hope you guys found this video enjoyable and you got some good ideas for things to kind of keep stocked in your home. Um, everything that I do within my diet and kind of going on this whole keto process is somewhat planned. Um, I try to plan my meals out at the beginning of the week. Uh, when I grocery shop and then I kind of go through the items throughout the week I try to avoid buying the majority of my vegetables in a frozen state because you get the most um, nutrients from your food when they're fresher um, There's certain foods that the nutrients stay locked in depending on how they are frozen or preserved And so I try to be mindful of that when purchasing items and then again the supplements that I take it really depends the amount depends on how I'm doing within my diet for that day. Um, there are certain things that I do take in you know, a bigger quantity just because I know I'm not gonna hit that goal ever within the amount of food that I can eat on keto, and so I do supplement that way. Um, vitamin C is kind of one of those things. Um, my magnesium tends to be one of those things, and then my omegas tend to be another one of those things that I have to supplement in there. So if you did enjoy this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up because that does actually support my channel, and it does let me know, again, that I'm putting quality videos out there that you guys are enjoying and, and are informative and are you know kind of helping you on your whole keto process. So until next time, I hope you guys are doing well. I hope everything's going great in your world, and I will see you guys later. Bye.